God be given all the glory. I finally have one of the most, in my opinion, humble, but accomplished, well-written, well-versed, well-spoken. It's been a few years, my brother, but I'm so blessed to have you on my show, Relatively Sports with Eugene Napoleon. This is none other than Coach Brandon Lynch, the assistant DB coach with the NFL's Cleveland Browns. What's up, Coach? Hey, man. God is good. It's good to see you smiling. Always, man. Always. Good to see you smiling. How you doing? Respect, man. You know what? God is good. Look, trying to take it one day at a time, man. That's all we can do. Listen, there's so much that we can cover, but I want to jump into this because you pour so much into these young people from the collegiate level, coaching my son, Brandon, which my wife and I still to this day appreciate because you continue to pour into that young man's life and we appreciate it. It's a blessing. What is it? Uh, about coaching that allows you to, I would imagine, teach life skills through the game of football. Absolutely, you know, and I and I say great question. You know, it's one of those things that like we all like yearn to hear that well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few, now I make you a rule over many. And I think that like when you're teaching, it's just really another form of stewardship, another form of you obviously being able to speak the Lord's word on people. So, you know, when I think about just how are you helping like young men, I think it starts with genuine deposits early. You know, we, we have a slogan where we talk about think big, start small, you know, and I know a lot of us talk about the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. Well, just thinking about it, what, what's the top 20% that we can be excellent in or that you can serve and give somebody? When you start thinking about it, it's the obedience to the Lord and serving others. So, you know, being able to pay those things forward, you know, we talk about, you know, those that drink the water must remember those that dug the well. So, you know, I remember our coaches from Coach Dungey, from, you know, my high school coach, you know, being able to pour these things in myself. And when I was able to give back to them, you know, more in a, in a liquid asset, their biggest thing was, look, when you see another young guy that may need it, make sure that you pour it back and you give it back. So like, I'm honestly just trying to uh, get things that were, you know, luckily given to myself early in life. Man, listen, well, you're doing just that. I live by a real simple code, right? And that is inspire positive change in the life of others, right? Because we know, like you just said, the blessing that God already gave us, he anointed us with so many different gifts and opportunities. So now when you get it, it's to the point where you got to, bring up that other, the other part of it. You got to bring that other universe, that, that other individual in to play. And what a beautiful way to do it because coaching, it's like teaching. I've been teaching sure. for 25 years. Sure. So you get a chance to be around these young people and God willing, you, you understand the steward, the, the stewardship part of it, where you are trying to pour back into them. Now, your career has been a great one in itself, but because you're so humble, <laughs> I got to pull this out of you because I already know. What was it like playing for Tony Dungy? Oh, my goodness. You know what? And I, and I, and I have to look away, you know, and I get goosebumps when asked that question because I, I'm a lifelong learner, you know, and, and it started from my parents being in the military, my mother being a master sergeant, my father being a drill sergeant. So, identifying leaders and those that are going to hold you accountable, like was something I was able to identify early. So when I think about Coach Dungy, this is the same man that having to play for him in 10, 15 years. Very first thing that he asked is, has your family, excuse me, hold on, let me, let me back up. He calls my wife by her first name. Have you and Francesca found a church home? And are you guys like, obviously like, developing your, your your kids in that way. And I think that for myself to, to acknowledge another leader, like put Christ first, put his wife first, put his children first, 
I think that that's extremely important, you know, and when I think about the transition from a player to a teacher, you know, as a young coach, very first thing that I want to ask, you know, coach is, look, you know, what are you learning? Like, you know, what, what, what are the next steps on being a coordinator, a head coach? And the very first thing that he says is uh, in the off season, he works on his relationship with Christ and his wife. And the reason why that was paramount, okay, obviously, you, you know, we know we're always going to keep the main thing, the main thing, and that's our father. But I thought it, it was interesting, you know, Miss Dungey, you know, not the kids, you know, he wasn't talking about, you know, run, you know, run game pressures. He wasn't talking about different coverages. You know, he was talking about his relationship with his wife. And I think that that's something that has allowed, you know, my family and I, from the start of us transitioning, like really to pour more, you know, I, we all grew up with this slogan, happy, happy wife, happy life, you right, know, right. being able to, you know, share, you know, both, not just our relationship with Christ, but also this wonderful sport, man, that teaches so much. And we all know that, look, we're only as good as our counterpart. So having somebody that's just as invested in serving, obeying, teaching as myself, it's been a blessing. But it started, obviously, with Coach D, man, like me being able to see him model it and not just say it, but I actually saw him walk these things. Wow. And you know what's funny? Um, I have a... a, a a kinship with that man as well, because when I first got to college, I was part of his fellowship of Christian athletes. No question. You no, know, at the University of Pittsburgh, he used to come in on Wednesdays and man, listen, I had a chance to, to like you said, to kind of learn it and see it develop right in front of me because what you, the man that you see is exactly who he is. Yeah. You know, he's so authentic in, in this sport. And this is why you're so important. I was telling Scholar, my producer, before we got on with you, I had sung your praises and gave you your flowers to him a while back, and so did Brandon. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your name come up a lot. <laughs> and it's funny because I said, you wait until you kind of understand. You got to understand. You got to meet this man to understand this man. But we need more men like him in this sport. Wow. So, oh, and it's the truth because the principles that you stand on it's interesting to, to, to it's, it's, it's hard to say, but it's the truth. That's not where we're going right now. Unfortunately, people don't stand on what they say. Mm. So when you get someone like yourself who's in a position to not only stand on what you say, but people are going to watch what you do and then they're going to follow suit in a productive and positive way. When I say we need more Brandon Lynch's in this business at every level, I mean that. That's humbling. Yeah, I mean that. That's why it's a blessing to have you on this show. The principles that that you stand on and you talk about your parents, which is which is definitely that's where it all starts. Is it difficult at the professional level to work with grown men now? How do they transition into that? Do they take it like, OK, I understand what coach is saying. I right, or I'm a grown man. I ain't got to. You know what I mean? Is it difficult? You know what? No. And, and I say it, I think that the misconception, you know, and, and a lot of teachers will say, well, they want to teach in high school or they want to teach in college just from the involvement in the young athlete. Well, I, I beg to differ. And, and I say that because when you're a high school athlete, a prep star or, you know, just player, you get a lot of guidance. You get a, a lot of attaboys. When you get to college, obviously those resources increase. And certainly once you get to the NFL, it definitely increases twofold. But the difference is when it's over for these guys in the NFL, it's over, you know? And I think that a lot of guys don't self-identify with anything but a player. So being able to look them in their face, look them in their eyes first as a man, as a, as a son of God, and let them know that, listen, you are much more than just a football player. You are much more than just an asset. You know, and really just keeping the main thing, the main thing, you know, talking about relationships first. You know, we talk about a lot of building trust daily, you know, and that's something that before I can communicate to you what's what's needed, where we're going, I better develop a genuine relationship and, and see what makes you tick. You get what I'm saying? So at that point, you know, transparently, 
when it comes from myself, I'm really here just to serve, like period. I'm here to serve, here to add value. And when we talk about building trust daily, that's something authentically I really work with each individual player, you know, and, and luckily, you know, from the NFL all the way back to college, you know, I try to make sure that I'm showing these guys these things daily because I remember not just Coach Dungy, but when I think about Leslie Frazier, when I think about Alan Williams, my position coaches, these are all men that, you know, they obviously modeled what Coach Dungy was saying, but these were the guys that I observed their, you know, how they treated their, their wives, you know, how they interacted with their kids, how they interacted with their peers. You get what I'm saying? And it, most importantly is how authentic they were with the students that they had. Wow. That means a lot. You know, I think we missed that. And again, those are the core values that we're talking about. So I love it. I love it. When you get a chance to go back and speak to some of the younger student athletes, do they really get what you're trying to say to them? I talk to my my, my young students all the time about being a, a true student athlete first. And, you know, you play this game to get to the next level. Everybody wants to get to the next level. But your value is more than just playing the sport like you know what i mean so do you have a difficult time trans like like speaking in 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 taking that to the next level in conversation with these younger guys i know they see you and it's like oh my god he's coaching the nfl he played in the nfl he has a super bowl ring all of this stuff they get enamored with that but they might miss out on some of the other points is it difficult to bring that point across how 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 the paying attention to detail and being a true student helps you in every phase of your life not just in sport you know what? By exposing scars, I think that it, it really helps that message. And, and I say that, you know, by exposing not just the good scars, you know, not just the good, okay, if you do this and this happens, but also, you know, some of the scars that have that have hurt, you know, some of the scars that have lasted, you know, and transparently identifying where, you know, taking accountability for myself and also like, look, hey, you can also get back up. You know, I think that that's important for a young athlete to hear that, you know, if you're failing, you know, obviously you want to make sure that you're failing forward and just recircling back with the relationship with Christ. You know, if if you're centered around that and if you truly, 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 truly are convicted that, you know, that everything happens for the for the good of the kingdom of the Lord, then you know that even our greatest pains, and, and I think that it's easy for us, you know, we're a little bit more mature. We have families now, you know, the Lord has gotten us up off the deck to see that, okay, some of our biggest pain has really led to, to serving and, and, and really led to some of our biggest victories. So being transparent to not just let them know like the good things, but to like really take the, take the cover off and to go back and retrospect on like, let me tell you where Coach Lynch really was as a sixth grader, as an eighth grader, as a 10th grader, as a senior, as a freshman in college. Like, let, let me show you the family dynamics and things that that I was having to wrestle with myself. And honestly, like just offering an object of if I know for a fact that if Coach Lynch can do it, I know that these, you know, our, our young men and our young ladies can definitely do the same thing. And, and it really, it comes with the word that you said earlier, you know, you, you first have to humble yourself. You know, I believe that they said that, you know, you'll be humbled twice in life, you know, once by your, by the Lord and then once by self. And obviously we want to choose that second humbling. You know, a lot of us have learned that first one just by, you know, it, it's the will of God, you know, which has been a blessing, but right. then hopefully we've learned enough that when that second time comes, it's something, it's a choice. It's a conscious decision that we can make. I'm going to tell you, and again, this is another purpose, like, like the purpose of what I do with this particular show. A lot of my younger student athletes and athletes in general, they'll watch some of this stuff. And I want them to watch it with their parents. Yeah. Because the whole purpose is I want something from this to impart with them where they can really get it and take it and it any which way they need to. But the funny thing about watching you and, and, and how you played such a pivotal role in, in our son's life, my wife and I sat back and it was awesome to see you wasn't just there for when things was okay. 
you were there when you had to pick up the pieces and hard discussions became real, honest, transparent discussions. And not everybody can do that because we're so into the microwave or the McDonald's, I want it now and it has to go now and it has to happen now. That's just where we are as a society. But very few times you really get someone that's going to be authentic and they're going to speak their truth, even when you're not feeling so good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even though when you don't want to hear because you want what you want. And that's the thing with you. I've always said your moral code is impeccable because you've always stayed the same. Always. Even when I reached out to you to come on my show, I know you're busy. The NFL is busy. You guys are doing your thing. <laughs> but you let me know this is a great time to do it. Yeah. Let's see if we can knock it out. And that's what I'm talking about because you see value in what I'm trying to do, man. And I, I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate that. Going back to your childhood growing up, and did you always want to play, first off, being good at sports, but did you always want to play football, get to the next level and all of that stuff? Absolutely. You know, and, and, and it was one of those things, you know, and I think that I, I try to brainwash my son, honestly, the same way, right? <laughs> and I say, you know, with my parents coming back from PT, you know, getting me up for school, you know, ESPN would always be on, but I had uncles, you know, that played, whether it be, you know, tryouts in the NFL or whether it be semi-pro. So for me to have like such admiration for those men and then, you know, for me to see these things on the TV. And I just remember, you know, my mother, like she loved, like my, my mom was like a, like a, like a, like a rough, like a, she liked the rough guys, you know what I'm saying? The real tough guys. And I remember just seeing my mom watch football game and just the enjoyment that she had. And I just remember always looking back like, you know what, you know, we, we actually, uh, we talk in Cleveland about no claps, <laughs> meaning that look, somebody's parent is going to be in the, in, in the, in the, uh, sidelines or they're going to be in the stands clapping and somebody's parent is going to be mute. So, you know, being able to see like what be able to have that type of enjoyment, you know, affected upon our family. Like it's something I said, I definitely would like to try it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. When it came down to picking schools and colleges and things of that nature, what was your process? Would you share that? Oh, absolutely. You know, and and I'll be definitely, I'll be honest. Okay. I was, was a little bit immature at the time, you know, so it was really like, okay, I want to get to the NFL. Like that was like a one, like, okay, what, what, what school, you know, would allow the TV exposure, what school would allow, you know, the development in the weight room, what teacher would allow, you know, the technique of fundamentals to be developed to get there. Like that was really the forefront of it. Um, but as I got to school, you know, it came, it kind of became one of those things that, okay, who's going to develop the whole, like the whole Brandon Lynch, who's going to help develop the CEO of the Lynch family, you know what I'm saying? So like really like seeking out those type of advisors um, really became important. Wow. And see, those things are key. Those things are key because nowadays, unfortunately, because of where we are now in the modern day free agency of what college football and basketball has turned into, <laughs> the NIL and all of that stuff, right? It's difficult to do that because you may find someone who will pour into you the right way but because maybe the NIL situation is not exactly where you need to be financially, you miss out on that opportunity because you might be there for a year or maybe one semester and then somebody else come and they pulled you away and now you're someplace else. <laughs> so it is such a difficult time to do that. And I, I think, once again, that's why to find someone like yourself in where the word means so much more than just you giving the sports piece or the football piece, it's really the man you know, it's really the walk of that man's life with Christ and the things that he's done that will, I think will keep people there and, and will allow them to really stay. You know what? I may find something else over here mm -hmm. that might be more monetarily beneficial to me, but Coach Lynch is beneficial to me because that's for life. Yeah. That relationship is for life. And those are the things to me that so it, it's more paramount than anything else. So I got to get to this NFL piece, my guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're there, you're coaching, you're doing what you do. Does it ever come a, a time when 
you get a chance to stop and smell the roses of where God has placed you. Because I know you're ripping and running. You, I, that's just the nature of the business. Do you get a chance to really sit down and smell the roses? You know what? I'm back here. This is where it's at. I'm enjoying this process. Man, 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 daily. And I, and I say daily, every morning that I wake up and I'm able to like, you know, lean myself off the bed. My feet don't even hit the floor yet. And I thank the Lord. And, you know, I, I kind of think back to Isaiah 54, 7. Um, and it says, for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with everlasting kindness, I will bring you back, says your Lord and Redeemer. And I, and I say that because that was something that when I had a career ender, you know, I was the person that really thought like, man, like for whatever reason, I had fell out of the Lord's grace, you know, only to renew my thinking, only to gather and, and reaffirm my relationship, only to see that if you will be faithful over a few, I will make your rule over many. So, you know, every day that I walk, I wake up, every day that I walk out on the field, like honestly, I'm I'm the guy that I touch the grass every single day. Like I like I really do. And, you know, obviously not just for myself, but you know, I always wanted, you know, the kids to see this, you know, my two daughters and BJ, you know, I always wanted to really share this with my wife, like the, the fullness of, you know, how this can affect our family and others. And with Franny, she's in school now getting her PhD in sports psychology. So when I say that she's invested in serving others and helping others in that transition, you know, it's been nothing short of a blessing. Wow. And that's what I'm talking about, man. That's that's that in itself is a blessing. You're 100 percent right, because you got to transition. At, you, <laughs> where do you go? Like you said, it's interesting because at every level from Pop Warner, you go into middle school and then the high school, then the college. Right. College, you hope to get a professional career. But after the professional career is over, if you don't set yourself up right, where do you transition into? Yeah. That thing can it, it can go in many different ways for you. Right. So to have someone that really understands that and they're going to be able to have the ability to tap into that to help these athletes transition transition into phase, whatever it may be, when they're done with their career, you need that. But here's what's funny. I see you doing that yourself as well. <laughs> when it's all over and people come back, guys come back to you. Because I know I talk to Brandon all the time and he, we, he and I always speak about some of his biggest decisions, you already know, I'm sure you're getting a text or a phone call from him <laughs> because he wants to run it back. Yo, what do you think? He'll say, he'll talk to myself and, 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 and his mom, my wife. But then I'm like, if I ain't even got to ask him, you want to hit, yeah, I'm going to hit Coach Lynch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm hit Coach Lynch. <laughs> because the advice that you give and that you've given over the years have been much needed. And I'm sure these guys, you have the same relationship, I'm sure, with your guys. You know, I'm sure you do, because athletes are hard. We don't trust well. Sure. You know what I mean? It's hard for us to trust. Because Yeah. So I know when they come across someone like you, it has to be like, yo, this is my guy. You know, because he's not going to lead me in the wrong, down the wrong path. You know what Scotty Montgomery said? It's always a place for the real. And I don't mm. think that, you know, enough teachers give the students enough credit for that, where like, you you know, if somebody's truly there to serve you, like, you know what I'm saying? Like without restrictions, like really there for you, the athletes know that. Sure. You're, there not, you're, you're not there to take advantage of them. They know that they feel it. They know who's genuine and who's not, you know what I mean? Because we get used to it your whole life. You get used to people doing this. <laughs> their hand is always out very few times you get used to people doing this come on yeah come here come here sit down let's talk you know what i mean how how do you feel how are you really feeling yeah and you know it's coming from a genuine place no question you know? in that so moving forward where do you see where do you see yourself god willing in the next five to ten years oh, great question Great question. You know, I would say, and and I th I've thought about this. I've wrote this down. You know, 
I would say in the next five to 10 years, you know, I really see our kids knowing that dad loves God and their mom more than anything else. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the, the very first thing that I see. Um, secondly, I really hope to see our family in a position that we're in the chair. And I say Charlie Harbison, when we first got in the business, she said, look, in order for things to change, guys like you have to sit in a chair. So, you know, being it being in a place of influence to not just add addition um, to your to your influence, but being in a position that you can multiply your influence because at at any stage, you know, obviously affecting the students is important, but you being able to teach the teachers and really have consistent direct feedback with the teachers who are directly impacting the students, I think is, you know, the biggest way to multiply that influence. So that's our prayer, man. And, and that's honestly something that every single day, like we work, we're working toward, whether it be relationship building, whether it be skill building, you know, mentally and physically, or just, you know, just acquiring different resources so that when we do end up having that opportunity, you know, it's something that can be sustainable. It will be. <laughs> Laura willing. <laughs> no, it will be. It, well, the, the key is you just said it, coach, like to me, I've always said in, in order to invoke, you know, any type of change, you have to have an open, the ability to have open dialogue, open and honest dialogue provokes change. It's impactful, right? But that only happens if you have the right people in the seat. No so it, it's because it's conversely, you, 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 you can't have the other thing without having that right person in the seat. This is why I'm so appreciative of, of, of what happens when you get someone like a Deion Sanders in the spot that he's in. No you know, there's a few others, but the, he comes to mind because the purpose behind what he does, it's, it's God driven. So anything that's God driven, it's not a money thing. It's not an ego thing. It's not a materialistic thing. It's, it's a God thing, right? Um, a lot of people don't understand that, but the ones who do, it opens up a totally different door because every decision you make is a moral decision because it's, 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 it's guided by God and the principles of how we were raised, right? What, what more beautiful way is it to lead to bring other people in that way than the other way? <laughs> so it's a beautiful thing. I'm so glad I have already in my head. I know you well enough to know that that would be something that those principles and, and the things that you want to see for others that you see for yourself, you're going to put people in that position. You know what I mean? You're going to so, aspire to, to pull people in that, in, in that way. That that's, that's a beautiful thing. I have a few minutes left, but I want to, I want, if you don't mind, what advice will you give a young person trying to seek or they want to get to where you are, but they just don't know the path to follow? What advice would you give a young person? And I'm talking female, you know, or male, because females now they're coaching, they're getting in the, at the professional level, which I'm, I'm so appreciative to see that those opportunities being given. What advice would you give them? What's a blueprint to help them guide them and making the right decisions to get to where you are? No question, you know, humility, you know, humble yourself and honestly come as you are, you know, know that, you know, they're gonna be different levels as far as this influence, they're gonna be different levels as far as learning. But if you can come authentically yourself, you know, because obviously you, you, you're gonna be the best you, you know what I'm right. saying? Like you may have exposure into different ways of doing things, but you have to humble yourself enough to absorb the different avenues that you're he that you're seeing, but then also having a level of humility to say, okay, this is the way that I'm gonna do things as well. So, you know, knowing that, you know, the perfect you is perfect, you know? And something that we received, I would say probably about 12 years ago is understanding the importance of a network. Because the moment that you do, you stop, your network does too. And I know that like when people are trying to jump to different levels or they're they're leveling up as some will say, you know, you have to you have to be very cautious and very guided, very strategic on what network that you're hitching your cart to. 
so that, you know, you, you said that, you know, a lot of people may want to get to the NFL. A lot of people are infatuated with the ability to get to the NFL, but not realizing that this is a job. And it can be very different when it's looked at as a job. You get what I'm saying? You know, so really just humbly coming as yourself, you know, so that you can seek the proper network and then work in that network. You know, I think that those are the things that I would advise first. That's what's up. That's what's up. Listen, to my Mountaineer fans who I know are tuning in and looking at this, I told you I had a real special guest for this week's show, and I can't say it any better than this. This is one of the most humble individuals, and as you see from looking at this show, this is Coach Brandon Lynch, the assistant DB coach of the Cleveland Browns. Coach, thank you so much for being on, and I'm definitely going to holler. Hey, respect. Please do. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, my dude. Stay blessed. Do me a favor. Give our best to the family. Hey, I will. Please do the same, man. Got it. Take care. Respect. Respect. Peace. Mm -hmm.